All right, what's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here with Mr. Ryan Muckenhorn to discuss. Actually, this is going to be a series of 10-minute talks, so keep your eyes peeled over the next couple of Tuesdays. NATO cartridges. We're going to go smallest to largest, and uh, there are four. So the first one would naturally be the 9 by 19 NATO. Yes. And uh, actually, you were just saying the one on the table here in front of us technically is not a 9 by 19 NATO. It Wait, is not. That is a 9 millimeter, though. It is. So explain what's going on here. So backing up a little bit, we're just going to get into the cursory uh, thing of what NATO is, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, formed after World War II from, did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, formed after World War II. Imagine this. You fight a world war with your allies. You show up, and um, you, the gentlemen of America, are shooting 30 out 6 They, the gentlemen of Great Britain, are shooting 303. Mm-hmm. We're fighting in the same territory. We're fighting in the same place. All of a sudden, ammunition stocks run low. Um, an unfortunate happening stance with a bomber and a, a, a you know large vessel carrying ammo. We sink that. Now what? Now we've got two different rifles firing two different cartridges. Um, we can end up in dire straits as yeah. allies. NATO was formed for a number of different reasons. Part of this is the standardization of calibers um, and, and some other things so that if we as allies go fight a war on foreign ground, we have same ammo. Exactly. Right. Um, so one of those early ones was uh, 9x19. Um, and getting into what 9x19 means... It's a nine millimeter bullet, so nine millimeters in diameter, and okay. the case is nineteen millimeters long, so measured from the head to the mouth. Okay, it's nineteen millimeters, nine by nineteen. All right, um, and then that has a spec adhered to it. Now there's a variety of different loadings within this too. Nine, not as much as say like the fifty BMG or the twelve seven by ninety nine, which we'll get into, but um, one hundred and twenty four grain bullet at I, I believe it's uh, twelve hundred feet per second is like the spec for that particular loading. Okay. So, gotcha. So it's the it's the the cartridge or the round, but also the bullet mm-hmm. has a spec as Correct. well. Correct. Okay. So if uh, a U.S. service member firing a Sig M17 or a Glock 19 or a Beretta M9 um, were to encounter uh, uh, you know a, a British service member firing a different pistol chambered to nine millimeter, I actually don't know what they carry. Um, you know, they'd be set up for nine millimeter NATO. Um, everything, the muscle memory would all be the same. Um, it can go in your MP5, it can go in your M9, it can go in your, um, you know, whatever nine millimeter arm that mm-hmm. that NATO participant country is running, uh, and then work function and everybody's on board with how it is and how it works. Um, this on the other hand is a commercial loading. Uh, this is a 124 grain spear gold dot. It's loaded quite a bit lighter than the NATO loading. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. One thing I should note is that this particular cartridge came along well before NATO was even a thing, long before World War II happened. Yeah. Um, so a was lot it, of, were, wasn't a lot of German pistols. It was, yeah. So it's parent by nineteen. Yep. Its parent case is a thirty Luger, which is a really interesting bottleneck pistol cartridge, which we've talked only very little about in some of these ten minute podcasts or ten minute talks. Um, necked up to nine millimeter, uh, and it's a phenomenal. Pistol cartridge is a phenomenal carbine cartridge too, or subgun cartridge. Um, the NATO adoption of it is just icing on the cake. So if we go to NATO countries, NATO participate countries, or we have allies from them, they they've got nine millimeter on the train. Um, you know, and is is the biggest difference between then this commercial loading and the and the NATO one then just how hot the NATO ones are? Loading? Pretty much specs uh, for like projectile weight or composition or style. So like this is a, an expanding bullet. Um, the NATO spec round that I'm talking about specifically would be a round nose or what they call a ball round. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So a full metal jacket. Uh, and then it's typically loaded to a higher pressure. Another thing about NATO cases, and this is going to be more prevalent in the five five six when we get to that talk, um, is how the case is constructed too, because there is a subtle difference between it. So if we were to cross section uh, any of the NATO cases, um, you'll see a little bit heavier con- or construction at the case web, um, which is right forward to the extractor groove. Okay. They're a little bit heavier duty. And a lot of the times, the primer pockets are staked or crimped. Um, this is especially useful for transport longevity and the machine gun use. Uh, so this particular 9 millimeter case does not have a crimped or staked pocket, hmm. um, meaning that its primer can be knocked out with it, you know, when we were doing the reloading podcast, just a simple pass through that gotcha. uh, reloading 
So uh, overall, I mean, it sounds like just a little bit more heavy duty. Yep. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So if it's for machine gun use, it keeps the primer from backing out under the repetitive fire of uh, a machine gun. Um, and it's a little bit heavier in the, in the case web to increase pressures. Um, so most of the NATO spec cartridges, and I, I think this is for all of them, will have a higher pressure than, say, a commercial variant. So, and then, Ryan, you were saying, you know, like uh, the NATO rounds are actually somewhat hard to come by, which, you know, looking at it, it seemed like availability was the reason why yeah. we did this, everybody did this. So what? where's uh, the contrast So there? on the commercial market, I think, you know, it would be technically a little bit more costly to produce new loaded NATO ammo because the brass is a little bit heavier. Okay. And it's hotter. So in a pistol, for instance, if you go down to your local big box store and you look on the shelf, you'll see a lot of 115 grain, 124, 147 grain, 9 millimeter. And generally, it's just ball ammo. Pretty inexpensive, right around nine bucks a box. It's not loaded to NATO spec. It doesn't have to adhere to those extra manufacturing processes like the staking of the primer or the heavier case wall um, or those increased pressures. I think it's really just an affordability thing, perhaps in this case. Yeah, it doesn't sound like practical. There's no. really no practical reason for the average guy. Not at all. No. Okay. In fact, in, in terms of like competition shooting, which I used to do quite a bit of, I would intentionally load my nine millimeter loadings down right. well, well, well below the NATO spec. So it's not so okay. Snappy. Correct. It was just advantageous from um, a follow through. You're not and, trying to put bad guys down. Just no. hit steel. Yeah, hitting steel and putting a hole in yeah. cardboard. Um, so I wasn't even close to what the quote NATO spec was. The NATO spec stuff, pretty snappy. Like I said, 124 grainer at I believe 1,200 feet per second, mm. which is stout. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, hmm. What do you know? How they settled on this one? I mean, there's a lot of pistol cartridges available. Like, do you know? Why? Yep, this is the one. So they have trials. Uh, they have testing that goes on. There's a whole panel um, that reviews this. Uh, they look at what countries are running. What you know, I mean, if it's a cost, if it's an availability. If I mean, think of any facet you would from um, like a logistics standpoint: transport, storage, manufacturing, availability, shootability. Um, they run through the tests and then they settle on it. Like this is an agreeable and usable thing. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing about the NATO part in one in particular that makes it not allowed for civilians to have, right? I know we were talking about uh, the FN 5.7. Not in the U.S. I, okay, so explain this. Because, like, remember the FN 5.7, they have mm -hmm. those armor-piercing rounds that the, yeah. a lot of the official duty professional guys right. use, and the civilians can't get that. So, so what? Yeah, so there could be a, a projectile uh, clause there, or, or, like, an asterisk or a, a caveat to that. Like, you can't possess um, an explosive projectile. Okay. Um, for a number of different reasons. It, similar thing with the with the uh, FN loadings that we were talking about in the 5.7 by 28 millimeter podcast. Um, but there are some countries that because that is a weapon of war um, in a caliber uh, that is available to law enforcement or military that you can't have it. Um, and whether they're a NATO participant country or not may be something altogether differently. I know some friends of mine uh, in South America that do a lot of competition shooting can't have 9 millimeter. Because Any kind? Nothing. They oh, can, wow. Yeah, I should say they can't have 9 by 19 9 millimeter Luger, 9 millimeter Parabellum. These are all common names for the same thing. Yeah. Um, so they have race guns. Like, I think you guys did a 2011 podcast with, like, Adam and Ruben. Yeah. Same guns chambered in 380 ACP and 38 Super. And then 9 by 21 9 by 23 all these goofy little walk-arounds. Oh, that's interesting. Correct. Um, so the caveats to a particular country not being able to allow that kind of thing, um, you know, that's a whole political discussion. I was going to say, what's the, I wonder what yeah. the practical reasoning is behind that. I think it's so you can't have the same kind of bullets that yeah. um, the guys enforcing laws do. Now, can you believe we've made it nine minutes and we haven't discussed the whole nine mil versus 45 ACP thing? I'm all about it. You're all about nine mil. Do, uh, yeah, I do we need an hour for that, gents? Probably. I don't know. I feel like everybody's kind of come to the conclusion that the modern ammunition. Correct. With nine mil. Yeah. There's just no reason to... I mean, I've even heard uh, people that go in and inspect wounds after they've happened can't even tell the difference between a 9 mil wound and a forty-five wound anymore. You know... With the modern ammunition. I, I would say this. If I can have more rounds on target quickly without a disrupted sight picture, if I can have more rounds in my magazine so that if, God forbid, I have to encounter a situation in which I have to use that kind of arm, I'm all about 9. Mm -hmm. Give me the advantage. It's a great round. I'd say so. Yeah. Look at that. We came in right at 10 minutes wow. with this one. Whew. It's pretty solid. Thanks, Ryan. 
Well, Let's next up, we're going to go up in size in the NATO cartridges to the 5.56. The ubiquitous 5.56. Oh. All right. Stay tuned. I think however this is going to roll up, I think next week. All right. Next week. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you next time. See ya.